Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. You can find me on my blog, Simple Handmade Everyday, and on Instagram as Kristen Esser. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 26. Happy spring, everyone. I know I talked a lot about the changes in the weather and light last podcast, but oh, I'm continuing to love it. So I'm sitting here recording with my cup of tea that I want to talk about today um, because I've got exciting news. Plum Deluxe Tea sent me a sample pack. Um, if you hear that little noise, I'm just, I've got these little packets in front of me and um, this has been super fun. So I got to go on their website and pick out a few to try. Now I am drinking the Reading Nook Blend Black Tea, but first I just want to tell you that when you go to their website, it's beautiful and they obviously hand mix all these teas with all kinds of really cool ingredients to, to flavor them in a very natural way. I will tell you right now that normally I am just a person who drinks green tea or black tea. I do like jasmine, um, uh, you know, jasmine flavored black tea. So I do kind of like sometimes are a little bit flavored, um, but I'm, you know, more like an English breakfast or the royal blend, you know, that kind of thing. Um, So I'm not really into super flavored teas. So I want to tell you about these. These are a little bit different. They're a little more flavored than than what I normally drink. And I actually went through and found the blends that I thought would be the least flavored. Okay. So the one I'm drinking now is the Reading Nook Black, uh, Reading Nook Blend Black Tea. Um, (laughs) I love these descriptions. I want to read to you what the label says. A blend of joy pairs with creativity, reading, writing, conversation, and relaxing. That sounds like the perfect tea for me. And what's in it, it has a little list of ingredients, black tea, rosebuds, lavender, chamomile, love, and gratitude. (laughs) Do you love that? Do you love it? I totally, totally love it. And it's delicious. Um, So it's very lightly flavored. So it's, it's nice for me to mix it up a little bit because I can drink cup after cup of black tea, just, you know, plain straight up English, English breakfast tea. And, um, so this is a really fun to way to mix it up. Um, the one I had yesterday is called, let me see, I've got this one right. Yes. It's called mindful morning black tea. A fresh take on Earl Grey pairs well with quiet moments and good conversation. (laughs) Isn't that awesome packaging? It has all organic black tea, orange peels, blue corn corn flowers, bergamot oil, vanilla essence, love, and gratitude. And the third one that I've tried, um, and that that one's very good. Oh, this is actually the one I had yesterday um, because it's a little more citrusy. Am I right about that? Yes. It's called Kitchen Table Blend. Why can't I talk today? Kitchen Table Blend. A great tea for... Tea time conversations, black tea, green tea, lemongrass, rose petals, jasmine flowers, lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit essence. It's a little bit citrusy. That with the the, the lemongrass makes it taste just really, um, really great and unusual. And it's also of obviously blended with love and gratitude. So these are the three teas I've been drinking. Um, they're loose leaf teas. They're obviously very high quality and I'm totally enjoying them. I will put a link in the show notes. Um, not an affiliate link, just I'll just send you over there if it's something you want to check out because um, I'm really loving them. So like I said, I am absolutely loving the spring weather. I'm in Southern California and the weather has been glorious. I'm sorry to brag for those of you that are still enduring ice storms and snow and things like that. Um, It's actually today is going to be 83, which is a little bit warm, but... um, I've, we've just taken to eating dinner outside, which I love it when we have that kind of weather um, to, to do that. We've been doing that, the three of us, uh, quite a lot. And I've also taken to just sitting outside at like five o'clock when I kind of wrap up my day and the laundry's put away. I'm done with my paid work for the day. I've straightened up the kitchen. I'm mentally preparing to make dinner, put away laundry. That's kind of, I do my sort of my homemaking between like four and five these days to kind of set the stage for for the 
for the evening. And I've just been either taking a cup of tea or sometimes a glass of wine and just sitting outside. I'm in my little swing chair that I got last year for Mother's Day with a book and just, you know, reading for like 20 minutes till my husband comes home. And, and then we kind of uh, relax for a little bit and get going on dinner. But oh my goodness, I just love, I love spring. We've been kind of working on the garden. Uh, we, we've we weeded and and uh, we're just uh, now we got in a soil test um, and found that our, our garden was deficient in nitrogen and potassium, but super high in phosphorus. So um, we need to kind of treat those separately. So that's what we're going to do this weekend and start getting um, some tomatoes and stuff put in there. Kind of explains maybe why we've had some less than successful gardening years lately. Um, because we have been slowly, even though we do fertilize and do a lot of, uh, you know, compost and things like that, um, we've worn our little garden soil out. So, um, yeah, so that's just been nice to just get outside. And as a matter of fact, I've been struggling with sewing at my machine lately just because uh, I feel the call to be outside while it's nice like this. In the summer, it gets really hot. I mean, not really hot, but... Um, it's just like it's sort of the perfect weather right now and I hate to waste it. I, I work inside all day and so as soon as I'm done with that I want to get outside and soak up that uh, sunshine. As I'm recording this uh, it's Easter weekend and um, so happy Easter to those of you who celebrate. I'm a little bit bummed out. Um, I've got two kids in college and only one of them's coming home because the other one just has a lot of work to do. They get no extra time off. My high schooler gets Friday and Monday off a nice four day weekend. Um, but my college kids get nothing. But uh, Chloe will make her way home because her, her work was canceled for Friday. So um, t it's Thursday as I'm recording and she's going to hop on a train Friday morning. And so we'll have a little bit of a, a longer weekend with her. And I'm just uh, super, super excited about that. So that's kind of where we're headed into headed into the weekend here. And as always, I would like to thank Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring the podcast. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, and notions. Did you know that they now carry cross-stitch supplies? They're always coming up with exciting new exclusives, clubs, and quilt-along programs. Join Fat Quarter Shop for the 12th Annual Designer Mystery Block of the Month Club. The club features the collection Orchard by April Rosenthal and begins in June. Fat Quarter Shop carries all major brands like Moda, Riley Blake, Wyndham, Robert Kaufman, and Art Gallery Fabrics with the largest selection of Fat Quarter bundles. Whatever fabric, pattern, or notion you're looking for, chances are they have it. Visit them at fatquartershop.com. There's a link in the show notes for you. As an aside, I have to say that I called Fat Quarter Shop this morning because I ordered some backing fabric yesterday. And as I was working on a project last night, I realized that I had completely underestimated the amount of background fabric I needed. And I'm very, very attached to Moda Bella 98, which is the bleached white. 97 and 98 are my two favorite whites. One's wider and one's a little more creamy. So it just kind of depends on the fabric it's going with. But I was like, oh no, I need some more of this. I wonder if they can, if I could call them and see if they'd add it to the order that I'd ordered a few hours before. So I waited till this morning, I called them. They could not actually add something to the order because apparently it looks bad to tack things onto people's orders. <laughs> but the person on the phone was so helpful and she canceled my existing order, which hadn't been filled because I did it yesterday afternoon. She canceled it for me and then I was able to reorder um, with both fabric things. So, so I only had to pay one shipping because it's the same shipping, whether, you know, because they have like this basically flat $5 shipping. And, um, and so I thought that was really nice. So, um, I just have nothing but good things to say. If at quarter shop, the fabric comes quickly and it's beautifully packaged and, and I truly love them. So let's talk about some quilting. I finished a quilt top and I'm super, super excited about it. Um, I did, I think I talked last time about, creating an Irish chain quilt with the Loyal Heights fabric from Jera Brandvig from Quilting in the Rain. And I, I think I confess that I was a little insecure about the simplicity of that quilt. And it is very simple, but it's very pretty. It's very pretty. And I did an irregular Irish chain. So uh, the Irish chain that I did is just, it's a nine patch alternating with an empty square. And the nine patch has a larger center square and smaller ones on the corners. 
And so the, the three inch finish center square, I think really shows off the fabric nicely. So there's enough big pieces of the fabric that you kind of see every, every piece in the line. And um, so I really love that. I um, was unsure what to do with the, uh, the back and there's so many beautiful prints, but there's a toile that I, that I picked a blue toile um, for the back and fabric. I actually put a pole up in my stories, which I didn't do a very good job of because I didn't know that you could edit when you pick poll for Instagram stories apparently you can edit the yes or no um, and I didn't know that I mean even though I should because I've seen people do that but so anyways I so I, I phrased the question weirdly so the, so I picked there's a plain toile and then there's that same I'm pretty sure it's the same print but it has some floral roses and some gold flecks also on top of it and it was overwhelmingly the choice the the one with the flex and stuff but that's not the one I picked. I picked the simple one because I like simple fabrics. I like simple quilts and, and I'm excited about it. I think I might, while I'm waiting for that to come, um, I might make some more nine patches and do just a row of nine patches to, to, to break up the back, to make it a little bit of a pieced back. I love a pieced back, but to be honest with you, by the time I get to that point, it just seems so much easier to just sew those two pieces of fabric together and uh, and call the back done. Um, but I'm never unhappy with having done a pieced back. And I have a few quilts that have them, but <laughs> almost always the reason they have pieced backs is because I miscalculated on the backing fabric. So I have to piece it to, to stretch it a little bit. I've gotten better with my math. So I have less pieced back now. So I'm, I'm working on that idea. I might actually, as a treat to myself, have that long armed um, with an edge to edge design. Um, even though it's got those, those blank squares at first, I'm like, oh, that should be custom quilted. But you know what? You don't, I don't want that because what you want is you want those blank squares to sink to the background because you want, all you want to see is the chain. So, so I'm wrestling with that. I'm wrestling with that right now. Um, but I have to say that I had so much fun piecing that. It's just, I mean, it was 59 patches and it's just chain piecing heaven you know and so th that was just it was so enjoyable it sort of reminded me of why I love sewing you know I just I really love the the, the physical action of just of sewing those strips together and pressing them and yeah so that came together in I feel like it, you know just working on it for a, an hour or so in the evening and some on the weekends and I, that came together in like a week um one thing that I really realized as I was doing a ton of um, pinning. I am a pinner for the most part because I really, I mean, it, the whole thing came together because it was accurately cut and it was accurately pieced. And um, so I do, I do pin my nested uh, intersections and, you know, so that they come out nicely. A little while ago, I treated myself to some really skinny pins. So most of my pins, and I have a lot of them, are those it's probably clover yellow flower head pins. They're very long and sharp and I love them. Maybe they're not as sharp as they used to be because I've used them, but I never had any issues with them. But one time I was talking with Minky and she mentioned um, that they have skinnier ones. And so I had to go check it out. So I bought some. They're so much more expensive than the yellow ones. So they're the blue flower head pins and they're like, I don't know. I can't even remember. I want to say they were like $8 for like, I don't know, 25 or something, but I just had to try them. I actually bought a pack from Minky too. She's always giving me stuff. And um, speaking of which, oh my gosh, I should take a, I'll have to take a picture. She has made some enamel pins um, from some of her designs from her fabric. And she let me choose one and I got the teapot, of course. And it's so, so adorable. And she also has made little fabric tags um, that say like handmade by you. I need to take a picture. They're sitting out, so I'll take a picture. And I'm just so darn lazy sometimes. But anyways, super cute stuff. So she's always giving me stuff. So I bought her pins. <laughs> Hardly the same thing. But anyways, I digress. So the blue flower head pins are so skinny. And so when you pin these intersections, the fabric doesn't distort at all, which sometimes when that, you know, when you pin it, the fabric distorts and then you don't have the clean intersection that you, that you are going for. And so I feel like I really, um, 
I want to invest in some more of those. I will put a link in the show notes and I will put them in my, um, have I mentioned that I have an Amazon page? So all the things that I talk about, um, hopefully, sometimes I forget to update it. I have like a little Amazon store page, you know, where I have um, book recommendations, tea recommendations, hand sewing recommendations, quilting recommendations. So I'll throw them in there too. I'll put a link at the, I usually put, if I remember, I put a link at the end of the show notes just to the, to the Amazon's, um, my Amazon page. But um, yeah, you might want to treat yourself to some of these skinny uh, blue flower head pens. I'm, I'm really loving those. The other thing that I've been working on is a while back, this just shows how slow I am. Um, Poppy Cotton sent me their Prairie Sisters fabric and it's so cute. It's got chickens and flowers and gingham. I love it. But for some weird reason, I have been completely creatively stumped with what to do with this, this fabric. I had kind of decided early on that, um, and maybe just because of the chickens and stuff, I wanted to create something for the kitchen. It just seemed like uh, kitchen. I, I, you know, there's, they sent me enough fabric. I will probably turn it, um, some things into a quilt later on, but I just, I wanted to do something really nice for this. And I've just been, I have, I have designed a gazillion things that I have thrown out because I just, they just, they didn't seem right. So last week I might've talked about, um, well, I've settled on that I want to do a table runner, a wide table runner. I've got one on my table right now from Target that's like 18 inches wide, and I have a 60-inch rectangular table, so it probably it's probably 72 or 75 inches, something like that that just hangs over the edge. And I really like the width of it on the table. And so I wanted to do something like that, um, but I just have not come up with the, you know, the great idea. So... Um, and it's a little bit, you know, it's very fresh fabric, but it's a little on the traditional side, I would say. Um, and so I kind of wanted to stick with a bit of a traditional pattern. So I was going to do quarter square triangles, like an hourglass block, just rotated all through it. I thought it would be very pretty. I would do each one, you know, each hourglass from the same fabric. And so I sat down the other night to make an hourglass block and which I have not made for a long, long time. I've hand pieced them. Um, but I don't think I've sewn a traditional one on a machine since the first quilt class I took, <laughs> which was, uh, and that was part of like to make the, the star points on an Ohio star. Anyways. So I tend to make things oversized and trim them down. That's my favorite way of doing um, half square triangles, flying geese. So I found a method to make quarter square triangles the same way, which is just to make two half square triangles and then you just lay them on top of each other and sew a diagonal seam. But when I went to trim them, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm no schmuck when it comes to piecing. I am a fairly accurate piecer, but when I went to trim them, they're harder to trim than a half square triangle because you need to get all four of these points coming right in the right place, um, coming straight into the corner. And that was not happening. And I just kept trimming them smaller and smaller and smaller, seeing if I could train my eye to figure it out. And I just threw them away. I'm just like, okay, if I have to make like a hundred of these, I'm gonna just be pulling my hair out. This is not, this this project is no longer sparking joy for me. So, um, I've now settled on, um, I have some block lock flying geese rulers. And again, I love to make things oversized and trim them. And a block lock is my favorite way to do that. I was thinking this morning about my first block lock ruler I got probably for Mother's Day about five years or so ago. And it was like maybe one of the best investments I ever made was a half square triangle block lock ruler. I got the five and a half inch size, um, which is fine. I never thought I'd really ever need to do a six and a half inch half square triangle. That seems really big. Um, so it does five and a half inches and less, you know, which so I use it all the time. The flying geese block locks are a little bit more complicated in that you have to buy the ones for every size that you want. You can't reuse the same one for different size. So I have a set of them and I decided to do big six inch flying geese. So six inch wide, three inches high because then three across will be 18 inches for my, my ruler, for my, I mean, my uh, table runner. And I'm going to just do it without a plan, really. So I'm, um, I, I sewed up like, I don't know, maybe a, a dozen of them last night. 
And that's when I realized, oh my gosh, I need more background fabric. So that's which got me to order more from the Fat Quarter Shop. But um, so I think I'm just going to lay them out and I don't think I'm going to do it solid. I think I'll leave areas that don't have any flying geese. I also have the smaller one that's See, mine are six inches wide. I have the three inches wide ones too, so I could even fit in, um, maybe work in some smaller flying geese. And I think I'm gonna, I don't know, play around with the the big triangle being the print, and and the uh, the white being the the wings, and then reverse that on some of them too, and just make a bunch of them, lay them out on the design wall until it comes up with something that I'm happy with. And I haven't kind of operated in such a freewheeling manners this for a while and so now this this project that was really stumping me creatively is ha now has me like really excited about it so so I'm I'm excited about working that out what else am I working on um oh hand quilting I talked a lot about hand quilting last week and my struggles with that so I did finally sit down with the marker and the um I talked about how I used a stencil to um to mark the Baptist fan pattern on my hand pieced project. And then I went back in with the marker and I filled in all the gaps, which was a little hard because they're all curves so that I have just a little bit, you know, I was getting lost as I was quilting when I would lose my lines and, and I made everything meet up. The problem is, um, now as I'm just, you know, I don't want to break thread. So I just keep kind of winding my way around and, and I think I'm going to end up with some gaps that I'm going to have to fill in later. But that that project is sparking a little bit more joy. Because I've marked with a colored marker, it's a little hard to see how good the stitches are. But I'm, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to sew it. I'm going to finish it. And if it's not great, I, I, I've got to believe that it's going to be better at the end than it was at the beginning. And I also know that I never go back and really inspect quilts that I've done before and you know when you're making quilt when you're quilting you see every um, cutoff point every intersection that's not perfect every stitch that's too big or crooked but when you get a little distance from it it just looks good because you see it as a whole so um, that's what I'm kind of kind of going with for that the other thing I just kind of wanted to talk about um, in terms of sewing is I have been sort of convicted lately in my mind that I always have some sort of um, podcast or TV show or something, audiobook, something always going in my ear. And I think that some of the therapeutic benefits of sewing, whether it's on machine or handwork, is letting your mind rest and sort of process and file thoughts and experiences. And I've become to sort of, I've started to realize that if I'm always listening, as much as I love podcasts, I love to learn, I love to be entertained, I'm losing something by never working in silence. So I challenged myself last weekend to just sew in silence. And it's just interesting that the thoughts that are kind of going through my mind and, and I sometimes have to just stop and jot things down because I think that creatively, you know, it's like the, the idea that people get all their good ideas in the shower. It's because you're in silence, you know, other than the shower going. And it gives your brain a chance to, to process and to create and to give you some new ideas or alternatively, just to rest. So anyways, I just thought I would pass that on to you. Um, if you also just are always, you know, having the, the noise in the background, um, maybe challenge yourself to just work in silence just for even like, I'm, I'm going to try to just even for the first 15 minutes that I'm sewing to not have anything going on. And then, you know, and, and if I'm going to sew for an hour or two, you know, I, I, I'm going to want to be entertained. Okay, so now that that said, let me tell you about all the shows that I've watched while I've been doing so much sewing. <laughs> and maybe it was because I've been doing more sewing and, and I realized that I, you know, that I've been watching a lot of TV. Even my son, Ben, said, you watch a lot of TV. I'm like, I know I do, but I'm always sewing when I do it. So I really don't feel any guilt about it. So let me tell you about a couple shows that um, I've really been enjoying. If you listen to Gretchen Rubin's podcast called Happier... 
She does that with her sister, Elizabeth Kraft, who is a writer in Hollywood. Elizabeth Kraft does another podcast called Happier in Hollywood with her writing partner, Sarah Fain. Are you following me? Are you with me here? Those two, Elizabeth and Sarah, have a new show out right now called The Fix. And if you listen to their podcast, you are well aware of this. They've been talking about it forever. Um, But if not, just let me give you a little rundown here. So interestingly, these two writers got together with Marsha Clark from O.J. Simpson fame. And they used her as a consultant and they created a show about a lawyer, probably in her mid-30s, that lost the case of a lifetime where a black former athlete, now actor, killed his girlfriend and her friend. (laughs) Sound familiar? And she lost that case. She just retreated in humiliation and went and like bought a farm. (laughs) This is where, you know, I don't know how much of this really mirrors Marsha Clark's uh, situation. But the idea was that um, lost a big case and, you know, kind of gave it all up. And the show, the um, the person, the I'm trying to, I've, I've already forgotten his name because I watched all the episodes and I'm done with that a week ago. Anyways, this, this character, um, his girlfriend uh, comes up dead. So it's like he's done it again. And so she sort of comes out of retirement to consult on this case. Um, so that is the, that's the idea of it. I got my husband to watch the first two episodes. It's a little too soapy for him. So I have to tell you, it's beautifully, you know, very kind of cinematically shot, you know, with the big, um, you know, drone shots. And it's, 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 yeah, it's like, it's, you know, it's nicely shot and everyone is beautiful. (laughs) There's not, there's not an unattractive person on the cast. Um, so the, these kind of things, you know, did, did not really appeal to him. But uh, there's only, well, there might be more. When I watched it last, there were four episodes. I watched all four. And there's some, you know, there's it's great story. It's There's little twists and turns in, in the plot, which reminds me that on Happier in Hollywood, um, Elizabeth and Sarah have these little sayings that, like sayings for the year that they'll write on their whiteboard to, to kind of um, keep themselves motivated. And, and one of them was like, um, I love my job and I'm lucky to do it, you know, being Hollywood writers, because they have to remind themselves of that when things are really stressful and tedious. And then um, another one of them was um, for them to be relentlessly entertaining. And so every time there's a little plot twist in the show, I think oh, they're being relentlessly entertaining. So anyways, I've enjoyed it. Um, there's pro- I just have I'm watching it on Hulu. And um, so there's probably an, a, another episode or two for me to catch up on. I'm glad I said it out loud so I would remember. So anyway, you might want to check that out, The Fix. And then the other show that I've started watching, also on Hulu, so I don't really know <laughs> where else it is, um, where it is on broadcast TV, is called A Million Little Things. And I want to say that this show is like 30-something but it's really more like 40 something meets the big chill. If you uh, have ever watched the big chill and this is a group of friends, tight friends who sort of um, even come closer together when one of them dies. And, you know, so there's a, it's, and it's a friendship that really is among, I think it's four men, which is, I think a little interesting. Um, so you find out how they became friends and, you know, they've all got significant others and, and, you know, one character has breast cancer. As a matter of fact, there's like a, there's a storyline about breast cancer that makes me uncomfortable. I'm a breast cancer survivor, so I get a little sensitive about those things, but it's also a little bit soapy in that kind of, you know, 30 something, I'm going to call it 40 something way, but it's very entertaining. Um, Last night I had it on and it's definitely a show that I can just listen to. I tried to put something else on, some BBC show that I thought, oh, this looks really good. Um, I immediately just had to change it because I was doing a lot of cutting. I was cutting those flying geese and I really wasn't paying attention. But there's something about these drama shows that, you know, it's you can just really listen to the dialogue. And every once in a while when there's silence, then I look up at the computer screen so that I can... um, like, why, why is there a pregnant pause here? And, you know, somebody's looking at 
I don't know, you know, like a note or, you know, like they're seeing something happening. And so I have to kind of, that's my cue to actually look at the screen. But um, so I'm still just in the first season of a, middle, a million little things, but I'm really enjoying it. As you probably all know, Game of Thrones is back on. I'm not a huge Game of Thrones fan. I, I have the same relationship with Game of Thrones that I do with Breaking Bad. And they are that they're, I consider them my husband's shows and he loves them. And he often is up before me and I'll come down in the morning and he's watching it and it's like mid episode. And so he'll pause it. He'll kind of catch me up on where, what's happened so far. So I get it like as a book report. And then I kind of watch the rest of it while half hiding behind a pillow because I cannot handle the violence. <laughs> um, but it is the last episode, yeah, last season of Game of Thrones. So I'm, I am totally going to watch that, which means that we have purchased HBO for a couple of months. And so let me know if you have suggestions for things that are on HBO that I should watch while I have it. Um, Big Little Lies is on there and I watched it last year. Well, we we did we do this every year with Game of Thrones is we just get uh, HBO for a couple of months. So I watched the first season. I think the second season's coming soon, but I don't think it's out yet. Um, but let me know if you have any HBO suggestions because I kind of want to make the most of, of our subscription to that. Now let's talk about books. I read The Persian Pickle Club by Sandra Dallas. So for those of you who um, listen to the Quilt Fiction podcast, you might be a member of the Quilt Fiction Facebook group. I think it's called the Quilt Fiction Club. And someone suggested that um, everyone like read a book and then have a little bit of a online book club. So I was game for that. I thought I had read this book before. Um, you know, I thought, kind of thought I was pretty conversant with all the quilty fiction authors. Um, this, and so for some reason I, I felt like I'd read it, but I had not. So I just got it from the library and it is, um, let's see, it says a colorful exploration of depression era, Kansas and the meaning of friendship. So if you uh, listen to the friendship album, 1933, podcast um, slash audiobook by Frances O'Rourke Dow, the off-kilter quilt, she has written that story in a, in a similar time frame in the, in the Depression era. Hers is in Ohio. This one's in Kansas. I have to say that I struggled a little bit at the beginning of this book because I was not as compelled by the characters at first. And, um, you know, I guess I couldn't help but kind of compare it to Friendship Album, which is not fair. Um, and I just, frankly, I like Friendship Album better. But about halfway through the book, it really picked up. As a matter of fact, I think it was just last Saturday morning, um, I got up early and got my cup of coffee and opened it up. And I read the entire second half of the book in one sitting. I felt like the story really picked up. And I began to care more about the characters because stories for me, they're not about the story. They're about the characters and whether or not I want to spend my day with them going through their lives. I'm very, uh, totally into character driven novels and, and it just all kind of picked up. So um, there will be, if you are not part of the quilt fiction um, group, I kind of encourage you to do that. And if you want to read this and they're going to be start talking about it at the end of April. And this book is only... 196 pages. It's a fast read. And so I totally encourage you to do that. Um, the other book that I'm reading that I'm finally have gotten back to is Becoming by Michelle Obama. And I'm just, I'm eating it up. I love it. That's the book that I've been reading in the afternoons with my cup of tea slash cocktail slash glass of wine <laughs> outside. And um, yeah, I just, I just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful book so far. She's um, where I am right now is she is about to meet some guy that she's supposed to sort of uh, show the ropes of the law for him. And he's got kind of a funny name. It's Barack Obama. And <laughs> she's going to show him around the next day. So we will see how that story ends. I really have, have no idea. So that's what I've been uh, kind of reading lately. So let's talk just a bit about homemaking. Even though it's spring, I have felt zero compulsion for spring cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually think that there's nothing that like, since we don't have a heavy winter here, it's not like I feel like there's this stuff that really, really needs to be done. What I really do want to do is wash all the windows. And that is actually um, a pretty good family affair thing to do. We can knock that out in an hour or so. Um, but I like to know that the chance of rain has completely passed because we don't really get rain in the summer 
Um, and, you know, we just don't get all that much rain anyway. So I, I'm thinking that pretty soon there's going to be no more rain and then I can wash the windows. But in the meantime, in addition to, you know, kind of doing the outside, uh, the gardening and weeding and kind of getting that all spruced up is that, yeah, I'm more in a sprucing up um, frame of mind, as well as knocking off small nagging things. I may have talked about this before, but um, I finally got some issues with our downstairs bathroom um, taken care of. It's like one of those things where you don't even quite know where to start. Um and that was where my issue is with having some flooring replaced and a leaky toilet fix. So I finally, I kind of just dove into it, got it knocked out. We replaced a doorknob down there. I am in, on the hunt to find someone to repair Chloe's closet door, which is driving me crazy. I'm When I'm done here, I'm calling the carpet cleaners, you know, just all those kind of little things to freshen it up. And as, you know, part of the whole, whole sort of cozy minimalist decorating scheme, um, I'm beginning to really swap out some of my, um, like I have these like big glass vases that have like kind of white wintry sticks and things in them. And I'm finding the urge, I want to go to home goods and see if I can find kind of more greenery to put in them. And, um, you know, just like bring more green in. I think I talked last week about plants. I feel like every time I leave the house, I come back with a plant. <laughs> um, Trader Joe's has this great plant called I think it's pronounced Pilea, which I have on the kitchen table and it's super cool. And apparently it's constant. It's called like, I forgot, like the friendship plant or anything because it throws up these little um, offshoots that you could just dig up and replant and give away to friends. And I'm so I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to see if I can pull that off. I also have an aloe vera plant in the backyard that I want to um, divide and, and give to friends. It's way overcrowded. And I think that would be kind of a fun way, way to share. So yeah, so Every time I leave, I'm just, I'm just buying plants. And even though I'm, I don't have great luck with house plants because of the way the light is in our house. But I figure if I spent, I don't know, six to $10 on a plant and it lasts me for three months, I mean, was that not worth it? If I just can throw it away and start over, I don't know. I'm kind of changing my mind about having to keep them alive for, for years upon years. So, so anyways, what are you guys doing for spring? Are you feeling um, inspired to spring clean, uh, to change things up? You know, tell me about um, any, any transitions that you uh, kind of do for the season. I want to take this opportunity to thank the people who have left reviews. Oh my gosh. I, every Every time I sit down to um, to do the podcast, I always check the reviews, and it's so thrilling when I find out that the people have left reviews. So thank you to G twenty two eighty four and to Honey um, one nine nine one who says that she started drinking tea every day. Yes, I'd love to be an enabler like that. So congratulations on that, and also TD Photo Quilts who said something about it. it's great to have a local podcast. So I am curious if, uh, if she is local to me. So thank you so much for reviewing the podcast. Um, it means so much to me. I love to read them. Feel free to share with your friends if it's something that they would um, like to listen to. And um, yeah, just keep those reviews coming. It really helps people find the podcast uh, when they when they search for, you know, Quilty Podcast, Creativity Pod- Podcast, when they go to to the podcast app. And that about does it for this time. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope that you did something fun, drank something fun, did some handwork, um, you know, went for a run, whatever it is. I um, am so happy to be in your earbuds and we will see you next time.